this is a uh, situation where a, a, a national mob, uh, an angry, violent, bloodthirsty lynch mob, has been loosed on our country. Barack Obama is a part of it. The Reverend Al Charlatan is a part of it. The Reverend Jesse Jackson is a part of it. Uh, the uh, New Black Panthers are a part of it, putting a bounty out, passing out flyers with wanted dead or alive. First, a $10,000 bounty on the head of George Zimmerman, who has been deemed to be a racist and a murderer, who, according to a Democrat member of Congress, executed uh, the young man Trayvon Martin for WWB in GC. That's right, walking while black in a uh, gated community. Um, and on and on it goes. The fires have been stoked. Gasoline is being poured on all over the place. Uh, it is a big racial divide in America because a, a white Hispanic, new term coined for George Zimmerman, thanks to the New York Times and CNN and beyond, a white Hispanic uh, and a young black man found themselves in an altercation. The young black man was shot, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, by 28-year-old George Zimmerman. Uh, and um, and here we are. We're off to the races. Now what? About 300 young black men have been shot dead since Trayvon Martin was shot dead, and no one seems to care much about that. But we'll we'll set that aside for the time being. I have a, a question that I want to ask, and there, I mean just uh, all this crazy stuff going on. Spike Lee, the filmmaker, tweeted out an address. You know about it that he said was the address, the home address of George Zimmerman. Um, as a means of inflicting terror and threatening the life of George Zimmerman and presumably his wife and, and his family. They are seeking to terrorize. It is a form of terrorism. Turned out, of course, that uh, Spike Lee, you know, he's a Hollywood guy now, uh, tweeted out the wrong address, and it was the address of some innocent couple in their 70s who felt that their lives were in danger, and rightly so, as a result of Spike Lee tweeting out, their address. There's apparently now, according to reports, some kind of a financial arrangement that has already been reached between Spike Lee, the filmmaker, and the family that he was terrorizing. These guys, uh, honestly, the lefties, and, and um, it's, you know, truthfully, it is mostly black left-wing activists, but not entirely. For example, Roseanne Barr, you know her, she's famous Hollywood patriot, tweeted out the home address of George Zimmerman's father, Robert Zimmerman, a.k.a. Bob Zimmerman, a.k.a. Bob Dylan. It's not really Bob Dylan, but that is Bob Dylan's real name, Robert Zimmerman. And um, Roseanne Barr then had to pull it back because apparently it's against the Twitter rules to be a terrorist on their, on their network or something. They are literally terrorizing. And this is one of the questions that I considered bringing up this morning, is are the lefties engaging in terrorism? But that's kind of a, a one-note question. Obviously, the lefties are engaging in terrorism. Um, they love terrorists. They give tenure to terrorists. They give pro bono legal defense to terrorists. They seek to liberate terrorists. Um, and now they are terrorizing. And they are terror, and they've been doing it for some time, sending busloads of people, hundreds and hundreds of people, out to the homes of executives in Connecticut to terrorize their families by populating their lawns with hundreds of screaming angry rent-a-mobs, you know, union mobs. They did the same thing in Washington, D.C., terrorizing the families of, you know, Bank of America executives, God forbid, who, uh, you know, the funny part was that, uh, you know, they worked for the Clinton administration, so apparently that, you know, they didn't do that enough uh, uh, vetting. Liberals have a problem with that. But we're watching, and, and, and Roseanne Barr is sending the thing, and, oh, gosh, I didn't realize I'm not supposed to engage in terrorism on Twitter, so I'll bring it back. Yeah. Oh, God. And Spike Lee pretended to apologize, but he didn't apologize, not to the Zimmerman family, just to the family that he was afraid might be able to sue him for millions of dollars because he was going out of his way to inflict terrorism upon them. Um, the left engages in various forms of terrorism all the time. You know, uh, going after people's careers is a form of terrorizing people. It's not violent terrorism. That's nonviolent terrorism. But they they seek to inflict terror. They seek to bring a reign of terror wherever they go. This is about fear. This is about the threat of violence. This is about the threat of riots. Democrat congresswoman last week saying, well, gosh, talking about the Trayvon Martin shooting, I don't want to see us go back to, you know, burning cities to the ground. Wink, wink. Uh, and, of course, simultaneously, coincidentally, on a more or less unrelated um, matter, we had uh, the uh, black militant in in. Detroit the other day, uh, Malik Shabazz, uh, also threatening to burn Detroit to the ground, which I think many would call urban renewal or some kind of a uh, some kind of an urban improvement program when it comes to Detroit. 
So here's the AFL. You know, oh, that you know, it's these conservative Republicans. They politicize absolutely everything. They are vile and vulgar uh, in the way that they wage war in the United States. It's why we are the most uh, divided we've been probably since uh, shortly after the Civil War. And uh, this woman has the, the brass to uh, come out with this vicious, vindictive, this is like the Jared Loeffner thing. This is just how these guys talk. It's just how they think. Um, they might as well be riding around in a mob on horseback, smashing out windows and throwing Molotov cocktails at the wrong houses at this point. Because the Zimmerman family is in hiding, fear for their lives. The father, Robert Zimmerman, agreed to do a television interview with Fox 35 down in Florida, uh, but not to appear on camera, so they shot his shadow on the wall, a silhouette, of the shadow of his head because he fears for his life. They're all feel like fearing for their lives. They're fearing for their lives because the left is out to get them. Because the left has decided that they know what happened that night. And the left does what the left always do. Uh, what the, the left is doing what the left always does. That wasn't very well phrased, that first one. And, and they are, what they're doing is terrorizing the Zimmerman family, threatening them with death. With death. And that is most definitely a form of terrorism. And, by the way, we have a Justice Department that once again is proving what they're made of by doing absolutely nothing to the terrorists or about the terrorists who are terrorizing, who are threatening, who are menacing, who are intimidating. And they're threatening, make no mistake about it, with death. Now, I've got a... Um, and, and it's not like just the radical militant group, the New Black Panthers. It's mainstream liberals like Roseanne Barr and Spike Lee and Democrat members of Congress. I mean, don't kid yourself. And I wish it wasn't uh, a race issue. They've made it a race issue. So here's the question. Let, let's, let's pretend for a moment that in America, in spite of the liberal left and their, their vile invective, which is an everyday thing, um, Let's pretend that we can have a serious adult conversation about the issues confronting us. What is justice right now? What needs to happen now to ensure that justice is served? That the interests of justice are served in this case? What, what does that look like? What has to happen for justice to be Upheld. 888 Let's go to the telephones. Let's go to Tim in Fairfax, Virginia. Tim, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Well, Chris, I mean, that's an interesting spin to the question. I mean, what is justice? It depends on what side of the story you're on. If it's not a conviction in jail time for a certain group of people who uh, happen to be on the left in this case, it's not going to be justice. It's going to be another example of injustice. So I don't think you're ever going to get a satisfactory decision because the media, the mainstream media, won't allow that to take place. Part of the reason is because you're dealing with a group of people that are fundamentally community organizers. They can't help and This is just too irresistible for them. And the other part of it is they see that hope and change has fallen out the window, so they need to revert back to the one safe place that they all reside from, which is institutionalized racism. You don't, uh, you don't have a chance at justice um, in a safe situation like this, regardless of the facts, because of what's been whipped up and, you know, the usual uh, characters. Mr. Uh, Al, you know, Sharpton uh, and uh, his history with Tawana Brawley. Uh, you have Reverend Jesse Jackson and uh, his uh, immediate uh, conviction of those players down in uh, Duke. Mm -hmm. um, immediately, they, uh, of course, raped this woman who turned out to be mentally disturbed, amongst other things. Mm -hmm. So this is a place of safeness for them. They rely on this. They go into it. When hope and change doesn't work, they jump on it. When have you ever had a president attack a news organization like Fox? When have you ever had a president call the police stupid? When have you ever had a president speak out on issues of this particular type of an issue like the president has. It doesn't happen unless you're a community organizer at heart. Mm -hmm. The ruckus, the fight is what they want. 